This is a temporary mass grave for soldiers who allegedly fought under the green standard of Muammar Gaddafi. Buried in shallow graves by local residents, 19 badly decomposed bodies were pulled out of the ground. Locals around the site believe 16 of those were mercenaries from other African countries. Three were Libyans. The corpses are in an advanced state of decay. Volunteers helping to exhume the site wore gas masks and protective clothing. Some onlookers, when learning that these could be soldiers of Gaddafi's hired men, let out the customary Allah Akbar, God is great, victory shout. Locals said two families who had relatives missing from the initial days of fighting had already collected the bodies. The rest have had to wait until now. A group of locals dug the graves to bury the dead, to stop children seeing the bodies. There are two locations, one here, the other at the bridge. The bodies were not tied, and that suggests they were Gaddafi forces killed during combat. We received a report that bodies were buried here. We came to this area to supervise the exhumation of the bodies. We will now try to identify them, and we hope that we might find some of Libya's missing among them. The other site, next to a flyover and a main highway, was exhumed in the morning. All that was left was the smell of decay and medical equipment. The bodies, we were told, were already being examined and checked to establish their identities. The smell of three-week-old corpses at this newly discovered gravesite is overriding, and these bodies will have to be identified and returned home. There will be many more roads and bridges to cross for the NTC in answering questions. They can expect to find more bodies, shallow graves and a growing chorus from families anxious to find out where their missing family members are. Nick Jones, Press TV. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, September 12th, 2011 and I'm Darko. This is part two of this news bulletin. I'm not sure if it'll be the last one, but I have a lot of news to get to in this uh, in this video. So I'm just going to kind of get to it. Uh, but first, just plug my website. It's ggnonline.com. That's www.ggnonline.com. And ddarko2012 is my YouTube channel. So go and check it out. Okay, so you just saw... Um, uh, the re results of the National Terrorist Council, or whatever you want to call it, and I reported on that a month ago, So, but now it's just coming out. It says here, China recognizes Libya's NTC as ruling authority representative of the people. So China was holding out, and, uh, and I think Russia still is too. But uh, now they're on board, so and they are selling. Uh, I guess basically, it, it, it probably had to do with uh, them just selling weapons, being able to still sell weapons. Because that remember that article was out last week where they were saying, "Ooh, Chinese was supplying you know weapons to Libya." So, and they were before the NATO and um, went in there and invaded Libya. So they just want to make sure they can still do it. And now that they can, well, they're going to support the NTC. It's all business. That's what it is. Um, says here, pro Gaddafi forces kill 15 at Libya oil refinery. So, his oil has killed 15 guards in an attack on an oil refinery on Monday in an apparent attempt to disrupt a drive by Libya's new rulers to seize the ousted leaders, last bastions, last bastions, and revive the oil based economy. Um, well, they're going to revive the oil based economy anyways. That was the whole plan of uh, the uh, NTC and the and the, pow and the powers that uh, helped them was to uh, get that oil revenue going. Libya Gaddafi forces cross over the north. So it says here that the report that some members of the regime of uh, Gaddafi have crossed over to some parts of northern Nigeria, according to reports by Hamada Radio and International Monitor Friday evening in uh, Kaduna. So uh, go in there and check that out. Talk about a convoy of trucks that slipped and headed towards the northwestern town of Katsina. So uh, U.S. boots are on the ground in Libya. Pentagon confirms despite repeated assurance from um, Obama. It says here the Obama regime military leaders that the U.S. would not spend un uh, send uniform uh, military personnel to Libya for the U.S. service members arrived on ground in Tripoli over the weekend. According to Pentagon spokesman uh, Captain Kirby, the four identified troops are there working under the State Department's chief of mission to assist in rebuilding the U.S. embassy. So there you go, the first troop. And this is kind of trippy. Remember that U.N., that creepy, surreal U.N. video that was actually came from them talking about after they go in and uh, uh, basically uh, do what they just just did a regime change and uh, the step-by-step -step, uh, 
um, agenda or plan that they were going to carry out, which was we have to establish, establish peace. First, we'll go and uh, sweep for mines. And look at this, disable any, expl any explosives uh, left over. And then, of course, what uh, to disarm enemy combatants. Remember I said in the last videos, you know, these people that support us on DC, remember before with Gaddafi, you could at least fire the weapons up, up in the air and that. It's like you're not going to be able to do that anymore. You're going to get be disarmed. And, uh, of course, you know, turning enemy combatants into productive members of society. That's what that UN video was saying. And they have them going in there uh, through, like, these different doors, you know, police, teacher, farmers, uh, military. And they go in there like uh, like it's uh, some kind of assembly line. And they come out, uh, you know, perfect, good little uh, tax slaves, and they call it democracy. So it's, it's, it's pretty creepy and sad is what, the, is what it is. It's a nightmare. Um, it says here, imperialists cannot conquer Libya. So... Uh, Gaddafi's message was uh, basically aired on Monday. It says, we will not uh, hand Libya to the colonialism. Once again, as the traders want, says, we will not be ruled uh, after we're the masters. He goes on here, and he describes his rivals as traitors and urges loyalists to press ahead with their fight across the North African country. So I'm um, going to keep moving here. Former congressman, I saw NATO troops behead Libyans. So Walter Fontre claims shocking evidence of war crimes. And he said he claims he saw NATO troops behead Libyans as part of a siege to overthrow Gaddafi's regime. And uh, he attributed a geopolitical agenda to recolonize Africa. He was a con congressman representing D.C. for a period of 20 years between 71 and 90. It says here the con former congressman watched French and Danish troops storm small villages late at night, beheading, maiming, and killing rebels and loyalists to show them who was in control. So this is pretty creepy right here because this may have actually been the people that were responsible for the mass graves. It says here the rebels told Fontroy they had been uh, told by European forces to stay inside. According to Fontroy, the European forces uh, would tell the rebels, look at what you did. In other words, the French and Danish were ordering the bombings and killings and giving credit to the rebels. Finishing up here, you can go check it out. Uh, link will be posted in YouTube's video description. Fontre said he spoke with Gaddafi in person that Gaddafi assured him that if he survived these attacks, the mission to unite Africa countries would continue, which he was doing. Um, he had a lot of support in Africa. It says here, because uh, he donated a lot of money to good causes, contrary to what is being reported in the press from what I've heard and observed, more than 90% of the Libyan people love Gaddafi, Fontroy said. We believe the true mission of the attacks on Gaddafi is to prevent all efforts by African leaders to stop the recolonization of Africa. So go in there and check it out. i got a lot to get to. Exclusive Libyan women guided NATO bombs to Gaddafi targets. Now this is pretty crazy because these people that are supposed to be uh, against Gaddafi are like... Uh, um, they're uh, Islamists, they're supposedly Islamist extremists or just, you know, stout Muslims, and they don't like Gaddafi because Gaddafi was actually somewhat, I guess you can call a liberal and a socialist, and he was for women's rights, and he was for women being uh, equal to men. And so this is kind of weird that <laughs> this Libyan woman would be guiding these NATO bombs. I mean, and they just talk about it that uh, um, everybody was shocked. They were concentrating more on the guys, and it was almost impossible to think that a girl was doing all this. So you see, it's just more propaganda. It just goes to show you that this whole thing is bullshit, and you're not being told the truth. Egypt threatens to use live rounds and security crackdown to protect the Israel uh, embassy uh, that was stormed last uh, couple well, a couple days ago. Israel approves plan to uproot 30,000 Bedouins, so a Bedouin resident in the village of uh, al Akrib. Uh, after it was destroyed by Israeli forces. I'm sure I butchered that uh, that uh, name of that town. I'm sorry. So then we have Israel warned against testing Turkey. Turkey uh, censored Israeli foreign minister, Mr. Lieberman. No, not that's not uh, Joe Lieberman of the sellout independent of the United States. Uh, it says here for his remarks that Tel Aviv will punish uh, Ankara by supporting its enemies. Then we have Turkey attempts to rally diplomatic alliance against Israel. It says Turkey's prime minister claimed that the Jewish state's deadly raid on Gaza-bound aid flotilla last year has been grounds for war. In quotes, Israeli ambassador flees Egypt this is September 11th. Iran to uh, try a Mossad assassin on September 13th. And Taliban offered bin Laden trial before 9-11. Foreign minister says group was prepared to see bin Laden put on trial prior to 9-11, but U.S. was not interested. The Taliban government in Afghanistan offered to present bin Laden who was a uh, basically a, a rich Saudi from a rich Saudi family that ties to the Bush family. Um, 
for a trial long before the attacks of September 11th, but the U.S. government showed no interest, according to senior aides to the Taliban leader, Mullah Omar. Next up, we have U.S. backs move to let Taliban open headquarters in Qatar in the hope of ending the war in Afghanistan. Sure, they haven't been there. U.S. drone strikes killed four in Pakistan. It shouldn't be there either. Just pissing off more people. New American ally in Somalia, butcher warlord. So it goes on here, and it says that uh, the notorious gun for hire who uses American funds to train African Union soldiers fighting the ruins of Mogadishu has been mentioned in connection with at least one murder. A U.S.-backed Somali government uh, general says here the butcher once ruled an entire region of Somalia. This is an interesting article. You need to go check it out. I don't have time though, to, to cover the rest of it. Drunken uh, Nigerian cops killed three at funeral, and uh, they fired on mortars at a funeral service. They were assigned to guard, killing at least three people. Then Sudan, it says here, government militia killed 50 civilians in South uh, Kordofan. Then on 9-11 anniversary, Ahmadinejad again questions official version of 2001 attacks. And uh, he goes on there and says the United States used the 9-11 attacks as an excuse for launching wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. He says attacks were complicated, designed game to affect people's emotions and pave the way for the invasions of Afghanistan. And Another good article, you need to go in there and check it out. It's by Activist Post, 10 Lies Enshrined by H. Uh, the House Resolution 391 to Never Forget 9-11. So according to a new five-page House resolution, which was passed to Never Forget 9-11. Wow, that's pretty crazy. The intention is great in theory. However, the facts are completely warped, talking about different things, uh, you know, different planes and like Flight 93 and that that was shot down. It says here, CIA, DIA knew of 9-11 beforehand. The U.S. intelligence analysis tells Press TV the CIA and the Defense Intelligence Agency knew about 9-11 from about April and May of 2001. It says, I discovered when, the CIA, when my CIA handler instructed me to threaten my contacts at the Iraqi embassy with war in the event that 9-11 happened and the Iraq failed to provide actionable intelligence to tell us would help thwart us so, Go in there and check that out. More news to get to in the wake of 9-11. 33 of 50 states are actively spying on Americans. And look at this. First responders overlooked for 9-11 memorial ceremony. And why? Because Bloomberg said we just don't have room for them. So real nice. But they had room for that big um, memorial, that big square within a square. You like that? Uh, with the waterfalls. That's very symbolic. I didn't mention it last time, but that has to do with the sacrifice for ISIS. The waterfalls is a symbol of, for ISIS. So, so it's here elaborate, and this just goes to show you that the pharaohs are still in charge here. <laughs> it says here elaborate New York City post 9/11 security. So go in there and check that out. Talk about uh, big. Uh, the Big Apple has its own army, navy, tanks, and soon an ace submarine. Look at all those cameras. Police are stopping every car coming into Times Square. And it just makes you think that because they did all that, that it's going to keep you safe, and you know, that's why nothing happened. Well, no, they carry out the tax, so they know when, when there's going to be uh, some kind of uh, BS threat like they did on 9-11 with the car bomb, you know. So it's here in Detroit, September 11, airline passenger, no threats as FBI. So, yeah, of course, remember that one woman who was sitting next to her dead uh, husband or boyfriend for nine hours on a plane, and they wouldn't land. Yet, they just land this plane because two people were making out or having sex in the plane. So go figure. So it's here at Rumsfeld, kept Pentagon open to send a message saying uh, basically uh, – that he didn't want the world to think that the group of terrorists could shut down the Defense Department. So, no, the reality of it was was that he knew that the Pentagon was hit by a missile and um, the whole 9/11 was a lie. So he didn't, you know, he, he was on the other side actually too. So. Uh, he, you know, he knew there was no threat, so I kept it open. Combat uh, casualties can boost pro-war sentiment. So see, 9-11 happens, and uh, all of a sudden you got all these casualties. Now you got to support the war on terror. So instead of there being all these bodies, you think people would be against it. No, it actually scientists and the experts say that casualties actually increase people's pro-war attitudes. So I hope you like that. Americans reject Tea Party ideas, says Obama. Says a vast majority of Americans reject the ideas of the arco-conservative Tea Party movement. It almost sounds like anarchist, doesn't it? U.S. military plane forced down by North Korean electronic attack. That's because, of course, the U.S. was doing exercises in their area. Donors fund forced labor in Vietnam. And Facebook commissar warns Infowars reporter about political posts talking about a uh, sustainable house. Find My Car app can also catch crooks. Well, that's what it's used for, talking about parking in the mall. Person of interest takes to streets to give people a taste of the show, talking about a citizen surveillance show. Then how are liar liars fly? how hot-faced liars can be caught out, uh, thermal image cameras, then a breath detector to find disaster to victims right. 
Driver claiming free speech sues after getting a ticket for flashing lights and warn others of a speed trap. And you know what? That's still bullshit because I'm sick of these speed traps. I've gotten caught in them in Oregon before, and it's bullshit because they don't care about safety. They're just there to collect revenue. They're revenue collectors. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.